With all of the news and headlines of the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra throttling, I thought I would do a little video explaining why companies are running into this problem with throttling devices, thermal limitations, and just overall performance being artificially limited by software. Now for today's video, I wanna give you guys a little bit of analogy. If anyone likes to watch motorcycle racing, you know that in MotoGP, you have MotoGP, Moto E, which is the electric bikes, but you have Moto 2, and in Moto 2, they're actually on three cylinder bikes, and all of the motors on those motorcycles are made by the same company. They're actually made by Triumph. And the reason that they all use the same motor is to kind of level the playing field. Now, interestingly enough, in smartphones nowadays, most of our smartphones are using SOCs from the same manufacturer, although we are seeing that change a little bit with likes of the Google Pixel, which I'm using right now, Samsung Exynos, and the MediaTek Dimensity line of chipsets. For the most part, in North America, all smartphones are still using the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, or previously they are using the Snapdragon 888. Now, because all of these smartphones are using the same chipset, it's not to say that all of these chips are exactly the same because manufacturers can actually order different specs and different SKUs of the same SOC with certain parts of that SOC being turned on or turned off, depending upon if that manufacturer wants to go ahead and give users specific features with that device. But because all of these devices use the same SOC, that means they're, they're gonna run into approximately the same problem, which is how do they differentiate themselves in regards to performance from one another? And that's why we are seeing issues like this, specifically with Samsung and OnePlus, kind of rise to the top. And this is why it's similar to Moto E, because for Moto E, even though the engines are all the same, manufacturers can still put them in slightly different chassis and do different things to change the performance and cooling of those engines. Same way, phone manufacturers can actually put different cooling systems and actually tune these SOCs differently. Now, we see a couple of trends that have kind of appeared time and time again, and that's that Xiaomi, uh, focuses heavily on performance and just letting their SOC run wild. And what I mean by that is that in Xiaomi devices with the Snapdragon 888 and the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, they are letting those devices get to really high clock speeds really, really quick for short periods of time. Those devices are spiking the voltage, the wattage, the power that's being pumped into that SOC to get you the best performance in the shortest amount of time. And then they're having to deal with these thermal limitations and they're having to then uh, essentially throttle the device back down so that it doesn't overheat and thermal soak the device. Other manufacturers, on the other hand, are not doing that. They are choosing different ways to do that or they are gonna change the wattage, they're gonna lower the wattage, they're gonna lower the clock speeds of the main performance core so that the device doesn't thermal soak extremely quickly. I wanna thank TechFluent for sponsoring today's video. TechFluent makes an awesome laptop pouch. You go ahead and you stick it on the back of your laptop and you can put your external hard drives in it, headphones and other laptop accessories. I'll have links to all that in the description down below. This is actually a Vietnamese cemetery. All around Hanoi, if you find a spot of land that's got kind of these weird things built on top of it, it's probably a cemetery, just like my YouTube channel is dying. Smash subscribe, hit the share button, and let me know what you think of this video in the comment section down below. But when we see manufacturers like Samsung, uh, manufacturers like Oppo, what the approach that they're doing is they are limiting, they are throttling the performance of your device for a lot of these apps, a lot of these tasks, a lot of these things that you're doing that they don't feel need this maximum clock speed, need this maximum performance. And they do it for a variety of reasons, but uh, you're gonna get better battery life, you're, the device is going to get to its thermal envelope slower. And what I mean by thermal envelope is that if I go ahead and fire up a game, that main performance core is going to fire up, it's gonna be at a clock speed, and the device is gonna internally get warm, and there's gonna be a certain amount of heat that the device can dissipate to the outside world in a specific given period of, of time. So when the device is starting up, obviously it's cool, you're, it's able to cool itself, the SOT extremely quickly, and then once it gets hot, the device can only radiate or 
like dispose of so much ex heat externally at a, at a specific given amount of time. And so what you're able to do, if you're able to go ahead and kind of throttle and slow those clock speeds, slow the heat up of the device, is you are potentially able to get slightly higher clock speeds for a longer, more prolonged period of time before you have to go ahead and throttle that device back down to kind of wrangle in the heat. And obviously, depending upon your, uh, ex your environment, external temperature, that's going to change how that works. And that's all part of kind of SOC tuning that manufacturers have to do now. Now, I was reading and looking at some benchmarks from Xiaomi devices, and something that caught my attention really fast was that within the first few minutes of a benchmark test, whatever Xiaomi device it was had already throttled down its peak performance down by 15% uh, within the first like 30 seconds of firing up a benchmark, which essentially means after the initial 30 seconds where the, the main performance cars, cores, are at their highest clock speed, at their highest level possible, and they have to reduce all of that by 15% for the rest of the test, right? And so regardless of whether or not the OEM is throttling the device out of the box, if they're throttling it for specific apps, et cetera, uh, you are going to run into limitations based on how much heat that device can dissipate. And you can either choose to throttle the device after those cores have heated up, after you've already sent it a, a, a huge spike of energy of electricity and it's being throttled because of heat, or you can go ahead and throttle the device based on application and based on actual workload. And a lot of that has to do with the performance overhead that we have on new SOC. So depending upon the SOC, how capable that SOC is, you might only need 70% of the performance of a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 to match the performance of a Snapdragon 865. And if a company like Samsung feels like, hey, you know what? If we can throttle the performance of all of these apps by 20% for our Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and the performance user experience is gonna be similar to that of a Snapdragon 865, we are confident that users are going to be happy with a Snapdragon 865 level of performance for using internet browser, for using Snapchat, for using Instagram, for using applications such as that. And ultimately, it's Samsung's decision to tune their device that way for those specific tasks. Now, in my mind, I kind of always thought that people were aware that Samsung was artificially limiting their devices. In settings, Samsung had enhanced processing and you could turn it on or turn it off. And in my mind, enhanced processing just meant like throttling. Like you want the device to run free and with like have as much power as possible or to like turn it down. So I always thought that was pretty apparent from Samsung in their settings. Some people um, felt outraged by it, but really what do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below and until next time it's been Mitchell, peace.